Hello everyone, welcome to the guitar series here at Musicians Edition. My name is Evan and today I'm going to be breaking down the electric guitar and amp setup for the rockers out there. This is going to be an absolute beginner setup going through the parts and settings you can try out if you just got an amp, if you just got an electric guitar and you're not sure what to do with them yet. Let's go ahead and start with the guitar itself. Here's an image with a bunch of labeled parts in the electric guitar. I'm going to focus on the electric guitar exclusive parts in this video. And that's going to be the pickups, pickup selector switch, uh, output jack, and the volume and tone controls. So first of all, an electric guitar works by using these pickups. Mine has three of them underneath the strings. Uh, on the body of the guitar, that's going to convert the vibrations from the strings into an electrical signal. That signal gets sent to the amplifier through the output jack and then the amplifier will turn that signal into a sound that we recognize as the electric guitar. So your guitar might have one, two, or three pickups underneath the strings on the body here. Then you likely have some kind of pickup selector switch. This is what mine looks like right here. And I'm going to show you a picture with some examples of what that can do here too. So my guitar has five positions I can move my pickup selector switch between. And with those five positions, if I put it all the way up towards the neck of my guitar, that means it's only going to be using the sound picked up by this neck pickup. That's going to be the dominant pickup. If I move it one down in the second position, then that's going to be using the neck pickup and the middle pickup as the two dominant ones to pick up the sound. Put it one more so that it's right in the middle, and that's going to mean just the middle pickup is going to be your dominant one here. Down one more in the fourth position, it's going to be middle pickup and the closest to the bridge pickup. And last one all the way down is just that bridge pickup is going to be the most dominant one. And if your guitar does just have two pickups, then you might have a switch that has three different positions going from neck pickup using both or the closest to the bridge pickup. And you can play around with those different settings just to see what kind of sound you like. It's really going to be personal preference and whatever kind of style of music you're playing. And one more part for the electric side of the guitar, you're also going to notice that there is a spot for a battery on the back of your guitar. And that battery will be using up power anytime a cord is plugged into the output jack. So don't always leave a cord plugged in or it will kill out the battery and you might be wondering what is happening to your guitar. Next there is a volume and a tone knob on most electric guitars. Some guitars might have more than one tone knobs. If there are multiple, then it's just going to be tone knobs controlling different pickups on the guitar. Uh, the volume knob is self-explanatory. Higher, lower, straight volume, that's it. As far as the tone knobs on your guitar, that's going to adjust more of the brightness of the guitar. So if you play it all the way down versus all the way up, you can see a bit of a difference in the brightness you get out of that guitar. And the last thing is the output jack that connects your guitar to the amp. Uh, the jack will unscrew. It does have two screws on here uh, for the plate of the output jack on mine at least. And then there's also the main output jack that can come unscrewed by itself without this whole plate coming off. And it's good to always make sure you do have that screw tightened all the way. It does sometimes come untightened inadvertently when you're plugging and unplugging in your cord. So always make sure that it's tightened. Uh, there are some electrical issues that can arise from that output jack, so if you're ever having issues with your guitar, it's good to check that battery, check that output jack, and just make sure all the wires are connected as they should be. If that's not something you feel confident doing, go in and take it to a guitar center or another place like that and they'll be able to look at it for you. So let's go ahead and move on to the amp now. We have that output jack, we have our quarter inch cord that connects from our output jack into the input spot on our amp. And let's look at what the amp has to offer here. So for mine, I'm going to show you what my settings look like. I use a Boss Katana amplifier, and this is the set of controls I have. And this is more than most amps offer. Mine is also a digital modeling amp, so that typically comes with more uh, features as well, too. Um, I'll just show you a picture of what the basic controls you'll see on most amps are, and that's going to be right here. So first, I'll go left to right here. I have a gain knob, and this gain will increase the signal strength of the guitar before it goes into these other options that we have here. It's often the first thing that affects the signal of the guitar, and as you turn it higher, you hear your guitar get louder, but it can also determine how clean or distorted the final sound will end up. 
So I can play around with my gain knob. Right now it's pretty low. And if I go a bit higher, a bit louder and you're starting to hear a bit of a break with some distortion there. Next, amps will often have a simple form of EQ. And EQ is just playing with the different frequencies of the sound that you have coming out of your guitar. We'll see bass, mid, and high, or treble, either or. And those are just adjusting different frequencies of the sound of your guitar. Most of the time, I'll leave mine right around the middle, set at 12 o'clock. Um, I'll usually turn up my treble, my middle every once in a while, depending on what I'm playing. Uh, but you can play around with those to see what works best for the type of sound you're going for. Whether you're playing some low chords, whether you're playing a high riff, you might find those knobs will help you get that sound for what you're looking for based upon what you're playing. Next up we have a presence knob. Now this is not something my amp has. It does have some similar things, but not exactly a presence knob. Uh, but you should have a knob that's similar to this at least. And this will boost the higher frequencies to make your tone brighter, uh, more dynamic and to have it stand out a bit more. So I think that's really best for if you're playing up higher. Uh, if you are playing some riffs, I think it really helps make that riff shine out through the mix on your song. And lastly, you will definitely have a master or a final volume knob, which is just that final adjustment of how loud or how quiet your sound is gonna be. It does not affect the signal otherwise. So if you are in a smaller space like your bedroom or if you're playing out at a venue, you can just have that final adjustment for volume. And that is it for those simple standard amp controls. I'm gonna go back to my amp and look at a couple more that you might have on yours too. So you might have an amp type setting. And for mine, it shows acoustic, clean, crunch, lead, and brown. And those are really just going through from the absolute cleanest sound to dirtier and dirtier with more distortion, just depending on what you're trying to play. So. For most electric guitars, that clean sound is one that just kind of gets you going, figure out the tone that you like in your guitar. If you are into more hard rock, if you're trying to play some power chords, some hard riffs, try out those crunch, those lead tones as well too, and you can see what kind of sounds it gives you. Then two simple and pretty related effects I'll look at next are gonna be delay and reverb. These are two effects that make echoes and stretch out the sound of the guitar to help fill a room a bit more, make it sound fuller, make it sound a bit prettier. So the delay will add echoes of the guitar sound, and those echoes are spaced apart, and you can usually have some setting on there to determine how far spaced apart those are. On my amp, I have something called a tap tempo button for the delay, so I can press this button and just tap along for how fast I want that delay to go. So I can play a metronome along with the song I'm playing or just tap along to the beat of the song and that's how fast my delays will go so it can stay in time with the song. That's usually how your delay is gonna sound best. Other than that temp, it's just gonna be one knob often that controls just how loud that delay is gonna sound from your guitar too. The last effect we'll look at is reverb, and this is a favorite for guitar players because it is a simple way to get a full, lush, and pretty sound coming out of that guitar. Whereas delays was one echo spaced apart ac across time, that reverb is gonna be a bunch of tiny echoes together that really help stretch that guitar sound. And you'll have a knob on your amp to adjust how loud that reverb is heard. And if you don't have a reverb or delay effect on your amp, I do recommend you to look into pedals or other kinds of things that you can use to help get those simple effects on there. And something that will really make guitar more fun when you do have some of these simple effects to play around between. And that is all for amp adjustments that we'll go into today. So one last thing to touch on with these is from left to right on the top of your amp is often how the signal will be affected as it comes from your guitar into your amplifier. So that simple example I showed, we can see gain was on the far left and on the far right was the master volume. So that signal is going in order between all of those effects and it's that last one that's gonna affect the final sound of your guitar. So first it was signal comes into the amp and then that gain's gonna affect how loud, how strong that signal's gonna come through. After that was the simple EQ with bass, mid, and treble. And then we had the presence and then we had the final master volume. So the signal is going in order through those, which is called an effects chain. And that's gonna end up being all together what gets that final sound of your electric guitar. 
So there you have it, a beginner's crash course to the electric guitar and amplifier setup. To those of you who just got their first electric guitar or just got that first amplifier, I hope this helps you get set up and start to playing around so you can have fun with your guitar. Stay tuned for future videos and I'll see you next time.